Hello, 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 everybody. It's me again, and it's time for a continuation of this story. Part two. That, that'd be the continuation. I have no idea why I said that. Anyway, this is from, again, Reddit user Erotius, and I really hope I'm saying your name right. Bringing home a stray legbeard. Part two. The Grand Floridian Vacation. I'm already excited, so uh, let's get into this, shall we? So as you all remember, after being pretty much the worst, Georgia Beard invited us on an all-expenses-paid trip back to our hometown of Panama City, Florida. That's right, we're that kind of Florida trash. I mean, I'm from Louisiana, so I feel you, living in the South is a thing. It's not always a good thing. We were excited because it was a chance to see our friends and my roommate's family, which are all like family to me because I've known them all my life. She was going to meet her future in-laws because they were engaged now and she was paying for everything out of her trust fund. What could possibly go wrong? So before this, I should probably clarify that her BS had already started to stink. Em is a welcome guest at my parents' house. He's been my friend since fifth grade and is welcome at their table anytime. Mostly because he knows that it's diplomatic not to complain about my mother's cooking. This is what got Vampire Beard expelled from my parents' house after he told my mother that her pot roast was dry. It wasn't, and the lecture he gave her on making it moister was not well received. Georgia Beard had a similar experience when she claimed to be allergic to cinnamon and imitation pineapple. Mom's house is full of cinnamon brooms, which she only had an issue with upon being told what they were, and after being in the house for several hours. What's more, for a nursing student, she is woefully incapable of answering even the simple questions from my mother, who is a nursing instructor. Mom also had some very real concern about her priorities and plans for after nursing school. Mom warned me that she was as full of shit as a septic tank. If that ain't a southern sayer. <laughs> but I kind of shrugged it off. You see, this was before I learned that a lot of people are kind of shitty. If you're my friend, then you're my family. There's no way that you would hurt me. No way that you would cheat me. Looking back now, I was naive, but I wanted to believe that these people valued my friendship in the way that I valued theirs. How wrong I was. So step one of this vacation was to rent a car. Now, Georgia Beard was actually a few years older than we were, 25, so she rented a decent sized car for all of us to use. I drove because she hated driving, and we made it to Florida with very little fanfare. Along the way, she bought snacks, meals, just paid for whatever. I had my suspicions about this trust fund being bullshit, but the fact that she was paying for everything without problems sort of made me rethink that. She claimed that she had been given access to the whole amount when she turned 25, the week before, so now she could access the money without going through whoever oversaw it. This had been an issue in the past when it came to paying her part of the rent and other household bills. My roommate and I knew nothing about trust funds, we are both from white collar families who were solidly middle class. So we just shrugged and said, okay, that sounds real. So we arrive, go to M's mom's house. M's family is just about the sweetest bunch I've ever met. My home life had been tumultuous. Most of that thanks to me being an angsty neckbeard teen with a case of the main character syndrome. This caused my dad and I to fight a lot, physically and verbally. And I was often allowed to stay over at M's house with his parents, asking very few questions. I had neckbearded all over his younger sister, gotten okay with his brother, and basically been adopted by his mother. So when I say we came to his mom's house, it was like her boys had come home. She met Georgia Beard, and at first, everything was fine. She met the family and got along with most everyone, but when his sister pulled me aside, I knew something was up. Alright, she for real? I don't know what you mean. She has a nursing degree, which she hasn't framed and you've never seen, and works at this retail store? Well, not really. She doesn't even work there anymore. So who's paying the bills since M just quit his job? Wait, what? It should be noted that while we were doing this meet and greet, I'd gone to visit some friends in town and caught up with an ex who was a good friend of mine. Em had never told me that he quit his job before we went on this trip. Yeah, he says that she's going to take care of him, but how? She has no job and no prospects, it sounds like, or desire to utilize what is basically a four-year degree. I have no idea. She has this trust fund. Yeah, that's another thing. Have you seen any proof of this trust fund? 
Well, no, but she's paying for this trip and the rental, so she must have some kind of money, right? Look, just be careful. You two can be a little gullible sometimes. Oh, she was very correct. So we go out to eat with our friends that night, and this was one of the biggest messes of the trip. We don't have a lot of friends. We're all nerds who basically cling together for protection in school, so when the boys get back in town, it's a party. We all gather at the classiest of venues, Olive Garden, because when you're there, you're family. And the salad and breadsticks flow like wine, which also flowed. My kind of party. So we're having a great time, but one of them had become the focus of Georgia Beard's ire. We'll call him Cloud, he's an FF fan. And had taken up my spot in our lease after I had moved back to Georgia to get everything ready for him to slide casually in. Now, Cloud was kind of a lot, but he'd been our friend for years and we liked him. He also, incidentally, owed him some money for back rent that he had not paid. Georgia Beard had taken it upon herself to get my man his money or implode their friendship trying. God tell me she didn't actually say that. We're out at dinner, everyone's having a good time, when, apropos of nothing, she leans towards him and delivers a Godfather-esque ultimatum. We didn't really invite you here for just the food. You owe him money. Either pay him or he doesn't want to see you ever again. You bring me to Olive Garden on this, the day of my daughter's wedding, and you insult me. How dare you? Cloud is rightfully confused, but tries to make amends. He agrees to set a payment plan with M, but GB is having none of that. No, pay him now or cut the fuck out. Wow, she's real classy. People are looking, and Cloud tells her that he doesn't have that kind of money. But I guess you know where that leaves you, don't you? Wow. So, Cloud left in a huff. He later told us that it was bullshit how she had ambushed him like that, and while I thought it was his comeuppance at the time, he sort of was a mooch sometimes, I didn't agree with how she had done it. Cloud was an old friend, and they had done him dirty. I was beginning to feel a little sorry for Vampire Beard, something I would regret, because that whole different story of awfulness, and how she was slowly separating us from our friends. Yeah, I, uh... Recognize that behavior, too! So the next few days are only eventful because of Georgia Beard. Here are some of the highlights. She got drunk one night, while supposedly pregnant, and told M's mother that someone with her past had a lot of nerve to judge her when she tried to reprimand her. M's mom is a recovering alcoholic, so that hit pretty hard. Wow. Bitch. Actual bitch. Huh. She apologized only to then offend her all over again when she asked her why she wasn't working at the hospital. We aren't using your degree, no it's a shit to you. Which did not endear her to her future mother-in-law. I pinned M down about quitting his job, and he told me that she had convinced him to leave and said that she would take care of his part of the bills. Remember this, because it'll be important later. She claimed to have been approached for a $280,000 home loan so we could move out of our dingy apartment, which was only dingy because of her. She scratched the rental car when she tried to get cigarettes and refused to report it. We went to the beach basically every day where she insisted that she and M have some alone time in the water at a public beach during the day at peak season. <sighs> Real fucking classy. They didn't get caught, but come on, man. People's kids are there. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? So we mostly just visited while she shat all over any relationship she might have formed with her in-laws. Until one fateful day. We're on the beach again. And me, like a dumbass, had accidentally locked the keys in the rental car. I wasn't thinking about it, and now we're stuck. So I called the rental company, and they're very interested in where we were and why GB hadn't been accepting their calls for the last 24 hours. She waddles up about this time, realizes who I'm on the phone with, and gets furious because I was supposed to call Papa Lock! While she's having her tantrum, the police show up. Oh. And then they take her into custody for some reason. Oh! Well then! Things just escalated kind of quickly, didn't they? Now, M and GB aren't married, so they aren't going to tell us shit. One of the officers did mention that it involved a credit card and suggested that we come pick her up after they'd talked to her. They towed the car and we had to get a ride from M's brother after getting our stuff out of the vehicle. So M is freaking out. 
Why did they arrest Georgia Beard? What's going on? Where did they take the car? All questions that I did not have an answer to. So about three hours later, she arrives home with the rental car. Huzzah! She immediately wants to take M off and explain, and they go to talk for a while. Remember this, dear readers. Remember this moment, because it'll make some things happen later so much more devious, so much more diabolical, so much more hurtful to me when I look back on them. Oh boy. They come back, and Georgia Beard tells me that it's all just a misunderstanding. The bank saw that I had some weird charges on my card and decided that it had been stolen and they couldn't reach me. Credit card? Why would your trust fund be linked to a credit card? Well, that's just how it is. For some reason, we did not question this, and so we packed and returned home the next day. And so we returned to Georgia, with tan skin and very little fanfare. But oh, dear readers, things are about to get so much worse. Stay tuned for part three, Cat Scratch Fever. Once again, thanks for reading, and I hope my past pain has brought you entertainment. This sounds like credit card fraud. Mm-hmm. This sounds like she might have been doing some illegal shit and only managed to weasel her way out of it by paying off some stuff. Oh, this is about to go off the fucking rails, kids. I, oh, boy. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. First off, let me just go ahead and touch on a few things because I really want to get into the next part because I'm, I'm looking at it. I can see it in my tabs. But let's touch a few things. And this is the one that like, really pissed me off. Um... As someone who's also, like, recovering from certain issues in my past that are very similar, um, bringing that up as an insult, man, you can go fuck yourself. That shit's hard, okay? It's not easy, and sometimes it can fuck you up for life. So for her to just callously do that kind of shit to his mother like that, to just be like, oh, well, uh, you're an alcohol, yeah, well, you can go fuck yourself, okay? You can go fuck yourself with a cactus. Actually unfuck yourself forever. No one fuck you ever again. I want you to be unfucked so hard that you're walking down the street one day and you hear a little noise like and suddenly you're a virgin again. That's what I want. Because you're a fucking asshole and that's what you deserve. To be unfucked forever. Negative fucked. Yeah. Imagine that shit. It'll fuck with you forever. Except that you know, it won't because you're unfucked. I don't know where I'm going with this but I'm going on a fucking tangent. <laughs> So, there's that. But yeah, she just sounds like an absolutely fucking horrible person. Just a complete fucking bitch. And I imagine this is only going to get worse. The manipulative behavior, the lies, the horrible, horrible way she treats people. Yeah, bruh. I imagine this is about to turn into a real fucking shit show. And I think we're all going to be here for the ride. So... Thanks for watching, everybody. I actually really want to go record the next part. So, uh, yeah, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I have a Ko-Fi, and I have a merch store, and I'd greatly appreciate you checking those out right now since we can't do live streams because my internet service provider fucking sucks. Still down. I'm waiting to get a new one, but I had to make an appointment. It's going to take a while for them to come out here and do the installation. So, merch store... Ko-Fi that basically keeps the lights on in here for now and I'd greatly appreciate it if you could check both of those out but if you can't that's okay too being here really means a lot to me because I love all of you it's true I have a discord and I have a subreddit if you'd like to send me weird stories or just any kind of story that you think would be good to be read by a magical space horse I mean it's me r slash moon horse stories you can check it out all the links to all of these things and so many other things, probably like three other things, I didn't count them, they're below this video, and every video for that matter, so you should go check them out. I love you all so very, very much, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, my loves. Goodbye.